Year 8, again, the rule of unknowing. Granite 2, 1058. It's been a hard two weeks since Mother evicted me, but I will stand by my decision. It is unfortunate that she does not understand the trials and tribulations of a budding storyteller. Who does she think she is, telling me I either need to find real work or leave the house? My colleagues and I were not simply playing wizards and warlocks. We were formulating ideas for the world's next great work of literature as a collective. Granite 5th, 1058 My travels have brought me to the dwarven city of Boat Murdered. My diminutive of stature and full beard have led its citizens to accept me as one of their own. How fortuitous. The efficient yet handsome architecture of the city leaves me in awe. Granite 8, 1058 The dwarves seem unfamiliar with wizards and warlocks, but tales of my exploits as a traveling war mage have been well received. In light of the recent loss of their esteemed ruler, they wish me to serve as a guiding hand in the development of the city. Naturally, I accepted. You said I would never amount to anything, mother. Midspring, 1058. The construction of the Sanctus Ceremon, the sacred temple of the gods, is well underway. The dwarves, unfortunately, fail to recognize the scope of my success in this project. I will soon be the first man to realize the creation of an exact replica of the most famous of locations from Wizards and Warlocks. Nonetheless, the dwarves do appreciate my skill in architecture. Late Spring, 1058 The past week has been a great disappointment. The elven traders who arrived ten days past left quite livid earlier this afternoon. In traveling to our humble abode, they had become quite displeased with the veracity of our lumber industry. Attempts to console them went awry when they took great offense to my offering of fine fishbone earrings. Ah, uh, alas, I'd wish to hear the melodious elf songs of W and W fame. The Baron Melbiel Tithlethudib meets with the elf diplomat Lema Serilasei. You have disrespected the trees in this area, but this is what we've come to expect from your stunted kind. Further abuse cannot be tolerated. Let this be a warning to you. Early Summer, 1058 This place is truly becoming a bore. Not a single dwarf among the entire population knows of the wonders of wizards and warlocks. All attempts to teach them have been rebuffed with laughter. No one else seems to understand the importance of W and W. I have ordered the construction of a bridge across the magma chasm. The area beyond has the perfect ambience to be the site of my further endeavors to bring the W and W universe to life. Midsummer, ten fifty eight. The dwarves are becoming nervous as construction progresses further into the mountain. I reassure them that my magic is mighty enough to conquer any creatures that may lurk in the depths. Late Summer, 1058 Disaster has struck. Progress on the antechamber of darkness came to a standstill when the inhabitants of the abyss, drawn by the dismal atmosphere of the structures, came to roost. Before I could reach the site to provide aid, it was already too late for our poor advanced miners. The halls echoed with a cacophony of screams from the unspeakable atrocities the dwarves endured before succumbing to the sweet embrace of death. On the positive side, progress on my novel has increased exponentially. Late Summer, 1058 The situation has taken a turn for the worse. The demons have begun encroaching upon the central fortress. All attempts to repel the monsters with magic has failed. Never before have I suffered such an unfortunate string of failed attack rolls. The fortress guard has been deployed to fight in my stead, whilst I renew my supply of magic missiles. Early Fall, 1058 It seems the entire fortress has lost confidence in my abilities as a leader. I admit the untimely failure of my magics was unfortunate, but I was able to guide from a safe distance, the fortress guard into victory over the demons. All things considered, the battle went quite smoothly. I hardly see why the dwarves live in such great fear of the creatures of the depths. Mid-Fall, 1058 I thought that after the defeat of the tentacle monsters, I'd be able to relax and recover from the horrible damage my reputation has incurred. 
Alas, it was not to be. A mere five days later, a forager returned to the city with alarming news. Goblins, envious of the fame and fortune I had brought to boat murdered, were en route with the intention to lay siege to my city. Late Fall, 1058 The dwarves continue to go about business as usual, despite the presence of goblins just outside the fortress. They are confident that goblin intelligence cannot outmatch the defensive power of dwarven door technology. I, however, am not so sure. Tonight I will use the predictive power of dice to determine whether or not the goblins can divine a method with which to breach the doors. Late Fall, 1058 As expected, I was quite correct in my assumptions. I rolled a natural twenty in the goblin leader's stead, and thus the doors will be breached tonight. There's a twenty-minute break between guard shifts shortly before midnight. Preparations are almost complete. Early winter, 1058. After several days of fighting, the entirety of the goblin forces have been driven from the city or slain. Although no one knows how the goblins were able to enter the fortress, my leadership abilities have once again been called into question. Once their investigation of the past year's events is completed, I'll be called before the tribunal for questioning. Midwinter, 1058. A decision has been reached. The tribunal has somehow come to the conclusion that all blame for the year's tragedies lies with me. However, thanks to the bonds of kinship all dwarves share, I will not be executed or exiled. Instead, I have been told that I must earn my meals as a worker or artisan, or starve. The situation feels oddly familiar, but this time I will endure the indignity of such unfair treatment. My novel is completed, and my rise to literary greatness is at hand. Now, if only I could find a publisher. Sankis posted, Tell me Sankis is still living. Tell me he's still living. Unknowing posted, Sankis is still alive, and he's being a big show-offy jerk, as if I'm going to study engraving under him.